Hi everybody, this is Doug at Willie Nellies. Uh, today we're going to build a fuselage for a wee willy. Uh, I randomly picked one out of the first run of kits. Uh, we'll open it up and let's get started. Looks like we got number seven. Call it lucky number seven, I guess. We'll, uh, save your bag. Makes a great, great gluing surface. Save your uh, instruction sheet. It's got uh, important center of gravity information and control throw information on it. Some little tips, things like that. Okay, so in our bag is a plywood piece that contains all of our bulkheads, our structural bulkheads, a firewall, and this is F2. This is uh, where landing gear mounts. These here are wheel retainers, the little circular disc looking things. And this is a spacer for the wing, the forward wing dowel mount, uh, depending upon what dihedral you put in it. Uh, if you put the stock dihedral in it, you won't need that. Uh, these two rectangle pieces here are servo rails. And this last piece is the rear wing mount. There's a blind nut that gets inserted there. So, uh, all the pieces on there. Fuselage side. Uh, let's see. These are uh, gear legs that get glued onto uh, the landing gear to make it look like a, a wide gear. These two pieces here are braces that get mounted just in. Whoops. These two pieces here are braces that get mounted just in front of the horizontal stabilizer vertically. We'll cover that when we get to it. Okay, next piece, horizontal stabilizer and elevators. Next piece is a vertical fin and rudder. Then we have a couple pieces of uh, 1 16th balsa that you use for cross graining the fuselage later. Let's see. One, one rib sheet. Uh, there are two different ribs on the sheet. These, these two here you'll see look a little different because they're narrower. These, these four are for the center part of the wing, the first two bays. The rest of the ribs can go anywhere else on the rest of the wing. And we have the center sheeting for the wing. Running out of space. Then we have another fuselage side, and this one has these two braces. These, after you uh, do all the wing mounting parts, will get glued in just underneath right here to help brace that. Because uh, people, when they hand launch them, have a tendency to grab right there, and it gives it a, a bunch of strength. Okay, next sheet is uh, the other bulkheads and other pieces. Uh, let's see here. This one here is the one that gets mounted at the, uh, we'll call this F3. It gets mounted right here at the aft edge of the wing. This one, this one here is F4. It gets mounted right there on the fuselage, okay. Now, this one here is the forward battery tray. It will get mounted in this slot. And then the, the next, these next two, get glued together. This tongue goes in that slot. I'll show you here in a little bit. But it go, that piece will go here in the middle of the fuselage. And it uh, serves to uh, mount your servos and an access hole to route your ESC and servo wires. This uh, part here is the forward top hatch. Goes immediately aft of the motor mount. These, these two pieces here are for uh, your hatch. One gets mounted in front and one at the back of it. And then these two smaller ones are your hatch tongues. Uh, we'll show you more about that later. 
These, these two pieces are your wing tips. And these two are uh, wing tip braces, the triangle pieces. They get glued at the main spar and help reinforce that to help it not flex on you. And another piece is the wing spars. Uh, these are your these two pieces here are your center spars and leading and trailing edges all all your spars and leading and trailing edges are on one sheet in your hardware bag you'll have two control horns two pieces of heat shrink you will have three blind nuts three washers and three screws, three 256 by half inch screws. Uh, you also have a piece of dowel that will act as your front wing locator on the fuselage. And for some reason, uh, we put these mounts in here. They won't fit the 1106 motors. Uh, it was an accident on our part, but uh, we use these like on the Mustang where you don't want a regular Cox motor mount uh, it fits the 1306s perfectly, and uh, it mounts up with the typical TDO20 mount pattern. So consider that a freebie. You won't use it in this kit. Let's see. Also, you'll have two pieces of .032 music wire with Z-bins in the end. These are your elevator and rudder push rods. And then you'll have a piece of 0.055 music wire made by K&S. Uh, we use this for our landing gear and for our uh, elevator joining wire. As your elevator goes through the rudder, so we'll have to bend a piece of wire to fit right there. It makes it really strong, keeps it light. Okay, so let's get organized here a little bit. Let me get the wire out of the way. Save those for later. Let's build the piece lodge first. Okay, so I'm just going to start popping out parts. We try to do a good job making sure that uh, everything's cut good. Uh, for now, I'm going to leave the aft, the aft wing mount and the servo rails in the piece. That way I don't lose them. And this is your firewall. We'll uh, pop those out. We won't be using the pieces on this yet, so I'm going to leave those in there, put them with the other parts. The rest of these are scrap pieces. You don't need them. Okay, so on the bulkhead sheet, we'll need that one. We'll need that one. Battery tray. Servo mount. And for now, we're going to leave these other ones in there. I'll pop out a few slot side. Occasionally, you will run across a piece where the laser didn't cut through completely. Uh, it looks. We try to make sure that they are, but if it isn't, it's fairly easy just to take a knife and just follow the cut and go through it. Um, do not sand any of these surfaces before you assemble it because you will take the, the self-jigging properties away that we have built into this. I know uh, you don't think just a little bit of sanding will make a difference, but we're, wa we're working in tolerances on these tabs and slots of sometimes up to a ten thousandths of an inch. So keep that in mind. It doesn't take very long to sand away ten thousandths of an inch. And yes, my laser can do ten thousandths of an inch accuracy and repeatedly. Otherwise, these kits wouldn't fit together like they do. 
Okay, so I'll get the other piece slide side out here. We'll leave the gear leg parts in there. And we'll leave the actually we're gonna need this pretty quick, so go ahead and pop out all these. There will sometimes there is a little bit of slop in the parts, and that's due to the fact that the balsa wood is inconsistent within a few thousandths from sheet to sheet, and sometimes from one side of the sheet to the other end of the sheet. So we've had to come up with a tolerance schedule on all of our parts to try to find a happy medium. We we kind of know we're pre, we pretty much know where our what our thickest sheets are going to be and what our thinnest sheets are going to be and, and we aim for the middle. That way, it's not too tight, not too loose. Most of the time, it's just right. Get all these pieces popped out. I'm making a mess. Good thing I'm in the shop. Okay. Pen works really good to pop these parts out fairly quickly. And the uh, half fuselage vertical supports. These are important. Don't forget these. Okay. So, I always start by putting the firewall together first. So, we'll need two screws, two blind nuts. Well, actually, we don't need the screws just yet. So, just need the two blind nuts. Always, one side of each part will have some. Uh, a little bit of scorching, a little bit of smoke residue. I always try to put these on the inside of all the parts where you can't see them. That way you don't have to sand them off. Nobody knows. But if you want to take the time, I guess you can. But keep in mind that all of our parts are designed with a very critical tolerance so that they tab and slot together. So once you uh, have those put in the holes, Push them into place with uh, something that's handy. Just use a pair of pliers or whatever. Then uh, you can take some glue and uh, lock them in place. Try to get it. Doesn't take much glue. Just a couple drops. Okay. Now that that's done, we will. Both of those came out pretty good without hardly any scorching. A little. Okay, so for now we're not going to uh, try to put the firewall on. We're going to save that for just a little bit later. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We need to make the landing gear. Okay, take your .055 piece of wire. This, the landing gears on these are real simple. You want to, let me let's see if I can get this. Each axle is three quarters of an inch. You can go just a little bit more if you want, but don't go too much more. You won't have enough wire for your elevator joiner. Okay. And uh, put a bend in it about like that. And then go three inches. And put another bend. This this will be the part that gets mounted in the fuselage. Bend it approximately that far. You'll know when you're right because it'll fit right in between these holes. They, they tie it into the fuselage, and uh, I think I'm right on there. So we're going to go with that. Then you go another three inches. And bend your other axle. Okay. Then you take your pair of side cutters. And cut off 
at three quarters of an inch. Okay, so as you can see, real easy, real easy. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Okay, the uh, landing gear wire gets tied in. You can use uh, bread tie wrappers, you can use uh, soft copper wire, you can use fishing line. Uh, for today, I've got fishing line right here handy, so that's what we're going to use. It's a real simple operation. I like to start at the center hole first, at the top middle, however you want to say it. And uh, tie you a couple knots in it. A little finicky on this first one, but it'll be alright. After we tie this in place, we're going to fillet it with uh, medium CA glue. Uh, you don't, if you don't have medium CA glue, you can use uh, epoxy sparingly. You can use. Uh, just about any kind of glue you want, actually. Um, it just uh, keeps it solid and move, from moving around. Uh, two more times. do the same thing on these uh, other two. Put it through both sides. If you guys don't have a spool of tw 20 or 25 pound uh, fishing line, I highly recommend it. Uh, I found more uses for 25 pound fishing line in the last few months for model airplanes than uh, just about any other little thing that we've got. Use it to tie the landing gear on, use it for hinges, uh, and use it to uh, tie wires together. All kinds of uses. And it's cheap. It's only a t like two dollars at the local Wally World. And we'll do this last one here. Okay, got that through. Tie her twice. Excess. Okay. Now what I like to do is just run a, a bead of medium glue. Around both edges. Then I'll take some CA accelerator, let that set up, and that's not going anywhere. This, this airplane only weighs about four and a half ounces ready to fly, and that far exceeds probably about 4G worth of force right there. So, good to go now. Okay, now that we have this, we will install it in the slot. Right there. Should be a nice snug fit. And set that aside for a second. Yep. We'll go ahead and uh, get 
Now if your tab is a little too thick, you can just simply pinch it just a little bit. The balsa will crush just, usually just enough, it'll make it a much better fit. So we will try this again. See, looky there. Fit right in there. Good to go. Okay, so now we'll do the next part, which is your servo tray. My building bag for this. We're going to pop these together. You might, uh, there's a little tab there. You might want to just lightly get that off so it fits together better. And then you want to, well, I guess there's a couple little tabs on the other side too. You want to uh, pop these together. And then once they're lined up, nice and straight, I'll take some thin CA glue and run it in the joint. And then I'll we'll fire it off because I don't want to. And since that's together, the smaller hole is wire access for your. Uh, ESC. Your ESC will go underneath here and the, the uh, servo, the wire that goes from your ESC to your servo will come up through this hole and your receiver will mount right there. So the bigger hole is for your rudder and elevator servos. So this next part, this fits, it's okay. Can be a little, can be a little tricky sometimes. With the landing gear off, you can use your use your table to uh, help get these in here. Here again, it's it's pretty tight tolerance, tight fit. And while we've got it like this, we're going to go ahead and take F3, uh, which it's mounted right here. Again, the scorch side towards the back, so you can't see it. Make sure that the uh, pushrod holes are facing up. You'll be able to tell also because if you don't have it oriented correctly, it will overhang either the top or the bottom of the, of the fuselage side. Okay, nice tight fit there. Okay, we... I have two pieces. Where did they go? Okay. Now these two pieces that we were talking about earlier, they are to strengthen this area of the fuselage right here. If you don't put those in, if you uh, have a little accident and th those aren't in there, it's going to. That's the most likely place for it to break. That adds an incredible amount of strength. So line it up with the very edge. And, uh, I just put a little thin CA glue on there to let it wick in. Now make sure you do a left and right when you're doing this. So we got that side, we're gonna put the other one on this side. Again, line it up. Top edge. Another setup. As you can see, it lines up with the uh, where the horizontal stabilizer butts up against there. And then once you're done with that, just trim off the excess.
probably should do this before. Put the milk in here. Okay. Got that. Okay. Your last bulkhead, we're gonna we're not gonna put that in just yet. And you'll see why. Okay. Now that we got all that done, let's uh slide this F2 former back in its spot. Just like that. Okay. So that's all dry fit, no glue. And once you're to that point, we're ready to uh, dry fit the other few slot side. And just, just take your time with this. It uh, can be a little tricky to get all the tabs lined up, but once you do, it just kind of falls right in place. Of course, I'm not going to, if I wasn't on camera, I'd already have, uh, have this all put together. There we go. We're getting there. This one in order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got her all lined up, looking good. It's very important to make sure that the fuselage sides are fully seated on the sides of the, the battery tray and the servo tray. Because if it's not, you won't be able to build a straight fuselage. As it is now, everything's perfectly square and straight. With your blind nuts, the flange side of the blind nuts go to the inside. That way when you tighten them down, it has something to tighten up against. Okay. We're gonna pause for one second. Okay, so, what we got here is, uh, I guess on the first few runs of kits, this uh, battery tray is just a hair too long. So you'll have to trim off just about uh, 30 second of an inch or so. Just enough to clear the fuselage. It'll be easier to uh, do this with it not on there. I don't want to go backwards at this time. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay, now we've got the clearance. Your blind nut flanges go to the back and the big hole goes towards the bottom. And uh, they'll line up everything. Look at there. Good fit. Okay, at this point, you can take some thin CA glue and start locking everything in place. Uh, try to keep your fingers away from where the tabs engage the slots, or you will glue your fingers to the fuselage. Sometimes it can be painful if uh, the glue sets off just right, because it can get pretty darn hot. Uh, we will come back and uh, glue this firewall in really good with uh, some medium. CA glue. For now, we're just tack, tacking the firewall. And uh, it's hard to show you all these, but uh, use a capillary tube. It lets you get down right in there and use a minimum amount of glue. Otherwise, 
you're going to be adding a lot of weight if you don't. And then we'll run it down here. Side. I'll do the other side here. Then we'll come down and get get the bottom. I like to, with the capillary tube, I like to uh, put just a, a little bit on each side because it wicks in there really good. If you don't use a capillary tube, I, I wouldn't go on both sides because you, you, if you're not using a capillary tube, you're putting more glue than you need on there to begin with. So it'll squish out quite a bit. Okay. So the next thing, we will take a piece, piece of scotch tape and we will carefully line up the aft tail both vertically vertically this way, the two sides, and horizontally this way. And as you can see, it's really nice and straight. Now with that, we will put us a couple drops of glue in there. fire it off I don't want to run it all over the place okay this is your uh, last former that you're going to put in place there are two small holes make sure you pop those out before you glue it in place otherwise you, the glue stands a chance to run in there and you won't get them out the two small holes will go towards the top of the fuselage this is the top so I'll just slide her in there. And carefully. Okay, this piece of wood must be a little bit thicker than the others. We're gonna, this is gonna be an exception to to my rule. We're going to sand this one down just a little bit. It won't take a whole lot. That's a busy day. Hopefully they'll leave a message for us. Got this thing off. Blow those holes out so don't glue all that dust in there. Yeah, much better. Look at that. Okay. Now you don't want to put any pressure except for right here and right here while you're gluing this. Otherwise, you stand a chance of warping the fuselage. There's my glue. And we'll go ahead and locker in place. So, of course my uh, glue tip decided to plug up on me so let's try this again. We will I think I'm about out of glue. It's okay I got more. Okay. And then we'll glue the other side in. Sorry if you can't see this, we're trying. 
Okay. Now we got that. Now this glue in the back's probably dried nice and good, so we can take that piece of tape off. This lodge is nice and straight. Flat. Okay. So next we will show you how to do the cross grain. It's a real simple process, it really is. Um, what we'll do is we'll start right at the aft edge of the fuselage. Just leave a, a tiny bit of overlap. This is the way I do it. You can cut all the pieces separately, but uh, I tend to like to do it this way. I'll put a drop there. The fuselage curves right there. So we're going to lock that forward part of the curve in with a drop of glue on each side. Then just light finger pressure. Try not to twist the fuselage or anything. Then we'll run a, a drop of glue. Oh, come on. On that side. The Fencia sets up pretty darn quick. So and then, and then we'll do the same thing on this side. And we'll just wait a second. And uh, we'll take a knife and we'll just come along the side. I try to leave just a little cut a little bit wider than needed and then sand sand the finish. It's also important when you're cutting this balsa wood cross grain like this that you do it in several light strokes. Don't try to cut it all at once or you'll chip it. Once you're most of the way through you can go you can do that. And then you can uh, butt up the next piece and repeat the process all the way down the fuselage. Just make sure your your piece is lined up there. This cross grain on one sixteenth on these little fuselages had a amazing amount of strength. Now, on the bigger ones we can get by with the uh, three thirty second and eighth inch going long grain, but on these little ones, we want to keep them light. And this is one of the one of the really good ways to do that. It really doesn't take that long. And once it's all in place, you'll be amazed at how strong this little fuselage is. Okay. And we'll repeat the process. If you do this right, you're cutting an angle every time. If you do it right, you'll uh, end up being fairly close and you won't waste much and you'll have some extra for extra balsa left over. But we included plenty just to make sure if you have an oops, you got, got an extra piece or two to fix your oops. Okay, and repeat.
the Papillon, Papillon motor glider. Fuselage builds exactly the same. Uh, the duster fuselage builds exactly the same. So, uh, if you build a Willy, a Wee Willy, you can easily build a Papillon or the duster. The wings build the same, the fuselages build exactly the same. As you can see, it, it takes just a minute to do this, but, like I said, the strength that you gain by doing it this way is remarkable. It has very little weight penalty. Well worth the effort. This is how we used to do it back in the old days anyway, so... Okay, so as you can see, that's all, it's already added in a bunch of strength to it. We'll go ahead and uh, get this top knocked out. Repeating the process till you're done. On this last piece, you will have to make sure it stops right there. You don't want it to go past there because that's where your horizontal stabilizer glues in, locks into place. But uh, it's okay to trim it after you glue this in place, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll go ahead and glue this big piece in. Go ahead and trim off the, the bulk of it here. Then, it's really pretty simple. You line up your knife right with where you want it to go. Put a little notch in it. Same thing on the other side. Line it up. Got a little glue on it. Most of the time, I try to stop right there with just a notch, and then you can bend it, and it pops right off. But I slept with my knife and got pretty lucky. Lined right up. Okay, so sanding, sanding these down really doesn't take much. I'll show you real quick on this one. As you can see, we got our sanded down in short order. I like to start out with some rough sandpaper just to knock the majority of it off. And then uh, always come back with finer grade before we uh, cover it. Okay, so your, your last piece, I, the, the hardest piece I save for last. How about that? What I like to do is I like to line up. And mark right where the landing gear comes through. 
because you'll have to notch this to, to clear that gear. Probably should have marked the. Uh, Cut line. We'll cut it right there. Okay. Well, I'll use my grid board here to make us somewhat straight. I marked it oversize, then we'll sand it to final size. Okay. It's off of there. And then we'll cut these. clearance holes for the landing gear. And then we got a little sloppy, but that'd be okay. The covering will cover it up. Once that's in there, same old glue trick. We're gonna hand drop on the edge. Same on this side. Same on the front. And then you can take your knife and score it across the grain and break it off just like that. Okay, we will work on the hatch. How about that? Let's do the hatch. Where's my hat to? Oh, right there. There's my hatch. And hatch pieces. And you'll want to sand off those little, little, little nibs, little sprue ticks. Line it up flush with the leading, flush with the forward edge of the firewall. Make sure it's, it should be darn near perfectly width. And, uh, Drop a glue on each point. Think about it. Okay, we got that. We'll fire it off. The other one. Don't glue this on this one in place yet. I'll show you why. Okay, these are your hatch tongues. You don't have. Don't worry about sanding the, the nibs off. You want to uh, leave about one thirty second past the forward edge and you want to center it up on, on the tongue or on the hatch cover and glue it in place. Make sure you uh, use accelerator and fire it off before you put her in place. Otherwise, uh, your hatch may become permanent. Okay, the reason I didn't have you glue this one yet is because we want to make sure we get it just right. So we'll take our sanding block, get that little tab off of there, and we'll get the little sprue tick off of there. You don't want to put your other hatch tongue on there just yet. Because we're using this to line up. You, and you want to make sure you put just a real slight gap. Because if you don't, it'll be too tight when you cover it, and you won't be able to use it 
as designed. Okay, but now we're going to leave this in place. But I just realized that uh, where the bulkhead lines lines up, and it comes up at an angle, but the plywood is squared out. So we're going to have to uh, take a second, sing that smooth. Let's try this again. I designed the darn thing and I forgot all about that. How about it? Okay, I'll take the other. All right, that fits much better. Again, make sure you got a little space. Uh, 1 64th, uh, no more than 1 32nd. Hold that in place. Then you can remove. Move the hatch, and you can glue this thing up. Oh, it moved on me. Try this again. It's a little tricky, but okay. Didn't move that time. Move that in place. I got my finger a little bit. I hit the forward edge. Tiny drop. Okay. Now that that's all set up, we can take the other hatch tongue and line it up on the same side as the other hatch tongue in the middle. And you don't want very much sticking out, just a 30 second at the most. Doesn't take much to hold it in place. And uh, we're on there. All right. And make sure you accelerate it. And it glues dry before you try to put, put this in here. Otherwise, your hatch will become part of the airplane. Okay. You know, notice the crop, the grain goes this way. It only takes just a little bit of flex most of the time. What's going on here? Okay. There we go. Had a little crooked. But you can see, simple, effective hatch. There you go. Okay. So, let's see. We'll uh, talk about the gear legs. These are kind of a neat addition. Make the gear, gear look nice. I usually wait and put these on last after covering the airplane. And then uh, I will cover cover these all except for the leading edge. And then we glue them onto the aft side of the landing gear. But we don't glue it to the fuselage. What we do is we take a thin piece of uh, willy coat, uh, about a quarter inch wide, and we'll wrap it around and hold it in place and then we'll do the same thing up here at the top just a quarter inch wide eighth inch on each side top and bottom and it, it makes for a neat looking landing gear addition uh, it adds a surprisingly amount of rigidity to the gear and don't worry about them breaking too easy because they just don't they just don't okay so 
I'm going to take a break and I'm finished sanding the, all these pieces and then we'll get back to uh, the rest of it. Okay, so we're back. And I've sanded everything nice and smooth. The fuselage is uh, ready for cover. Look how pretty that is. Nice and straight. Oh my. Don't get much better than that. Okay, so we're going to set that aside for a minute. And uh, vertical fin and rudder. Easy peasy. Pop it out. Vertical fin. Sand it nice and smooth. It's ready to cover. It's ready to cover and install. The horizontal stabilizer, or excuse me, the rudder. That's your slot for your uh, control push rod horn. Control horn. There we go. Right words, right order. <clears throat> Again, it's ready for sand. Ready for cover. Those are as you need to go this is a horizontal stabilizer and elevator don't pop out the elevators yet go ahead and uh, pop out the horizontal stabilizer but don't pop out the elevators yet and I'll show you here in a second why okay. and, uh, horizontal stabilizer Ready for sand and ready for cover. Simple as that. Okay. Now the elevator passes through the rudder. So we have to join the two elevator halves somehow. So what, what we do is uh, take your knife and cut that piece right there. And then you can pop that out. That's actually exactly what you need to uh, bend the piece of wire to. So we'll take our uh, what's left of our 0.055 wire that we made our landing gear from. This is plenty. And uh, so. not quite a quarter inch deep not quite a 90 I, need, I can do better than that that's pretty close better to have it just a little bit too long and you can trim it off and you, what we're doing is we're using using this as a template to uh, get it just right and it works. Works good. Okay. What we do is we'll cut this off. A little less than a quarter inch. Wow, that one got some uh, distance on it. And as you can see, you got it pretty darn close. You need to bend. This one just a little bit more. Pop it down in there. Okay, so what we end up with, see if it'll focus, is that wire is going to be embedded in there. And that makes that, that connection very strong. You will not break it. So pop your wire back out. And you'll want to take a sanding block, rough that wire up where it's, uh, where it's gonna glue to the balsa. It don't take much. You'll know when, on this music wire, when you've sanded the, the crust off, because it gets nice and shiny. So 
have a I can take some uh, acetone or some kind of solvent and uh, clean it off good, but I've never had any problems otherwise. Uh, one thing you do want to do is pop out this control horn slot. Oh, I got to the right word the first try that time. Because if you don't, the glue will wick in there and you won't be able to get it out. So pop that out now. Put your joiner wire in there. Make sure it's fully seated. And then I take medium CA glue. Bob Smith, great stuff. Don't use anything else. And fill up along the edges. Fill it in. Be generous with the glue and I like to set it off. The medium CA is fairly easy to sand smooth so don't worry too much about getting too much on there. Then I'll come to the back side and do the same thing. Fire it off. Our magic building kit bag, non stick. I was trying to think of some more words, but they didn't pop in my head. Okay, now that that's dry, we can pop this out. Don't worry if that little piece sticks in there, it's real easy to trim away. You just stick your knife in there and both sides. Got some needle nose. It'll pop right out. There you go. Elevator. Ready to go. Ready to final sand and cover. Okay, so next we'll let's let's build a wing half. So let's pop out a spar. Bam. We'll pop out a leading and trailing edge. Just like that. Okay, we'll pop out two center ribs. You'll, you'll notice that the, the center ribs in between them, it's almost like a, a tall cross there. So just just pop out two of those, that's all you need. And then, we will pop out the rest of the ribs here. So we need, need five regular ribs per wing half. I had to stop and count because the papillon, papillon has a longer wing and takes more ribs. And I've slept since I drew this. Okay. So let's pop out all the, the vent holes. Get them out of here. If you don't pop these out beforehand, it there's a chance you could run some uh, glue into them and you will not get them out if that glue gets in there. I know. I've done it. Get all those out of there. Okay, the most important thing about building these wings is making sure you build a left and a right. Okay, the center of the wing will always have these these larger, wider pieces. The wing tips are skinnier. The center spar is a left and a right. As you can see, that's at 90 degrees. That's your wing tip. 
The 90 degree part is your wingtip. The other end, focus is at, a, at the correct angle for your dihedral for, to fly this as a rudder and elevator only. So this needs to go to the middle. These need to go to the middle. So lay your parts out the way they should go. And uh, we will start with the third rib in, which is a standard rib, full size. Slide it in the slot. Excuse me. Start with the center spar first. Too used to building the, our other wings. It'll be a, a snug fit. Just be gentle with it. It'll fit in there. You can use your building board to, to help push it down flat. And we will do that. All the way out to the tip rib. Okay, there's that one. All of our Wii Series wings build exactly like this. So if you can build build this wing, you can build any of the constant cord Wii series that that we have and will be coming in. The, the Papillon wing builds exactly the same. The uh, Duster wing builds the same. The Latabria, Wii Tabria builds the same. Oh, we haven't released that one yet. Uh, yeah, the uh, Constant Cord Wii Series wings all build the same. Okay, center rib. Double check to make sure we got our dihedral in the middle. We put one of those in there. Okay, that's all just dry fit for right now. Oops, uh, that the wingtip rib and the very center rib we kind of save for last. So what we'll do now is we'll line these up on the leading edge. Slide those all in place. And now, all the self-jigging and the tolerance stack-ups are starting to pay off. Because, look, and I'll do the same with the trailing edge. Take your time. Don't force it. Once you have it lined up, it should just slide right in. Okay, there we go. That, that wing does not have a drop of glue on it yet. You want to double check to make sure it's perfectly straight, which it is. And once you do that, start gluing. And glue. Ah, my darn glue tip's plugged up again. We'll pin that off a little. Use a capillary tube, thin CA. You won't regret it. It's worth the 20 cents or so for each one. Okay. You don't take much. I like to do the, the center spar first. We'll do that side. Then I like to come back, put a drop on each rib, each leading and trailing edge. Use, as you go, make sure you're fully seated. Okay. I was off just a little on one, but it'll be okay. Just a tiny drop is all it needs on each one of these. And if you do it just right, you can you can see it wicking all the way around. Okay. So we've got now about another glue. Time for a new glue bottle.
Now it's getting hard, hard to manage. Okay. All right. Oh, got some on my fingers. All right, we're reloaded with glue now. This will go a lot quicker, a lot easier. So then I'm going to come back on each side of the joint, each joint, put a drop. And then we'll do the other side of the ribs. like that. Be careful because some of that glue is still wet. Wow. It's uh, setting off good today. Fumes are getting to me. All right. Center rib. We'll cover that. Well, let's, let's do the tip rib. It's the easiest one. Yep. Even though the, it's not completely self-aligning, it mostly is. So... Uh, the first one you want to do is the center carefully. Make sure it's fully seated. And then the other two pretty much just fall right into place. Once you have that in there. Take a drop of glue. Nozzle's leaking a little bit. Uh, boy. Okay. That's good. Okay, now we'll get back to the center rib. The center. Center spar has this angle, so when we slide it on there, you'll see. It's got the right angle built in. Just make sure it's flush against that center spar. And your center ribs will fit in your leading and trailing edges just like that. Once you have that in place, put a drop on each joint. And you're good to go. Okay. So, let's do a wing cap. Okay, these are your wing tips on the Wee Willy. All the wing tips pretty much go together the same way. This one's a little bit different. Make sure you sand, sand it nice and smooth. This is one of those exceptions where you sand it before you put it on. And it's pretty simple. You line up the front, the radius part of it will go forward. You line it up on the end. Always try to make sure the leading edge is lined up right. Make sure it's flat against the table. And uh, run you some glue on the joint. Wait a second. Make sure the glue got in all the way. Yeah, I did. And I'm going to fire that off because I don't want to stick to it. Okay. So you, as you can see, it's nice and flat. Now we go back to those two little triangles. This wingtip only needs one. 
but you'll have to uh, lightly sand that little that little tick off of there. And you want to line that up right with the main spar as close as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer you get it, the better it looks, especially if you use transparent covering for the wing. But you want to line it up just like that. Put a drop of glue on the joint. And we'll come back and we'll get the other side with the drop. Okay. That's it. That's your wing tip. Easy. Easy peasy. Okay, we'll do the center section now. Okay, so each center section gets one of the big rectangles. It gets two of the smaller rectangles. Let's see, I'm missing something here. And it gets one of the smaller ones. Do not sand these. Do not sand them until you fit them. Each one uh, will fit just a little bit different. You can see we'll have to sand that one just a little bit. Imagine if we just take off those ticks from the uh, laser. That'd be pretty darn close. Don't force it. It should just slip right in there. I got just a little bit more to go. Not much. Oh, we're real close. This is the most difficult one, so. Just take a little bit of time. Okay. Look at there. That's darn near perfect. Okay, line the sheet up with the edge of the rib and let that fall where it falls. Should be real close to that, that angle though. Once you have that in there, take your glue and put a drop on all the joints and you're good to go okay the bigger rectangle goes immediately aft of there and that one fits perfectly without any modification so we're going to go with it there again We'll put a drop of glue on all the joints. Getting a little sloppy with my glue. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fire that off so I don't stick to it. Okay. Let that dry for a second. Now, the two smaller rectangles we're going to glue together to form the top piece. Um, take the two sides that you just sanded nice and smooth. Butt them together. Line them up edge to edge and take your glue run it along the edge it'll wick in there pretty good fire it off okay now this piece forms the whole top top of it what I like to do for the leading edge 
is sand it at an angle like this. It doesn't take a whole lot. That way, when you line it up there at the leading edge, see how nice that fits? Okay. So once we do that, we're going to line the edge of this sheet up with the leading edge of that rib. And make sure that the sheeting is parallel to the front edge there. Once we do that, we'll take some glue and get her in place carefully. Got my finger. Let that dry for a second. And then the rest is pretty easy. This one sixteenth, we, we select it so that it easily conforms, is easily conformed to it. Now don't don't worry about this just yet. We're we're gonna sand that and I'll show you in just a second. For now you can just go ahead and glue the rest of it in place. Yeah I got my thing in it. And on the inside you can see that there's a ledge there. We did that on purpose so that you can glue it just like that. Put a little pressure on it and you're done. Okay, so there's a wing half. The only thing left is some sanding. Because the top rib curves in and is curved along top, the sheeting is going to be a little bit overlapping in the middle. We want to sand the sheeting flush with that rib. Again, it doesn't, doesn't take very long at all. Nice soft, soft wood. can see that we've got our built-in dihedral angle and I will show you this trailing edge real quick that the old timers are going to cringe when they see me sanding this direction across the grain but this is the quickest easiest way to do this and if you go slow it don't, doesn't tear the boss away it only takes a few swipes here, as you can see. And you'll know when you've just about got it because you'll start to see some of this edge start to round. But as you can see now, look how nice that is. Okay, that's how you build a wing for the Wii Series constant cord. Uh, the wing tips do vary between each one, but uh, we'll try to cover that on each individual video as uh, we build each one. So we're gonna pause for a moment and uh, put this other wing half together. Make sure you build a left one if you're following along, because this is the right wing. The center section goes to the middle. So we're gonna pause for now and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back. Look what I did while we were gone. Build another wing. Uh, one thing you want to do is when you sand these, is to uh, slightly round the bottom edge. Just a little bit. It makes the wing fly a lot better. It's still a good wing if you don't do it, but uh, just a little something I always do. And it, Always works really well. So now we're going to glue the two wing halves together. Use a medium CA. 
one quick thing. Just make sure that you've got the, the center sheeting sanded smooth to this rib. Do a trial fit to make sure that it fits with no gaps, which it should if you uh, sand it smooth to the, to the rib. So what we're going to generously coat this, including the center sheeting. And it's pretty simple. You just uh, set it on a flat table, line up the leading and trailing edges, and then lift it up until your gap's gone. Something with my finger. Just hold it for uh, about 10 seconds. The medium Bob Smith glue takes about 10 15 seconds without accelerator. And we're going to hold it nice and tight for that entire time. We don't want it to sag. That's pretty good. Okay. Then what I like to do is just go ahead. And put a, a small bead of medium glue right at the center joint. Let it, if there's any little crack at all, it'll flow in there. It'll be okay. Just go ahead and Don't accelerate it, just let it kind of find where it needs to go. Don't the swing doesn't need any kind of fiberglass in the middle or anything like that because of the, the D box type construction here, the monocoque. It uh, works just fine. Uh, the airplane only weighs four and a half ounces ready to fly, so you don't need to reinforce it for like you're building a pattern a large 60 size pattern plane or anything like that okay now that's settled in there a little bit we'll go ahead and fire off what's on the outside okay we're gonna take I can take a sanding block and just make sure everything's smooth along the bottom too crazy. You don't, don't want to take too much meat away. Just make it smooth. Okay, so there we go. Whole, there's a whole wing. If you follow the instructions uh, we just post, we just recorded, it should only take you I don't know, 20 minutes to build the whole wing. Okay, so next we're going to show you how to uh, do the wing, the bolt-on wing installation. We tried to make this as simple as we could. You'll need the short piece of dowel that we put in the kit. You'll need one screw and one blind nut and on your plywood sheet you'll need the, this piece here with the, the hole in the middle that's your aft wing mount get it out of there I guess I'm gonna have to take the servo rails out don't lose those those are your servo rails Okay, so oh, it fell out. So there's a couple little nibs you you want to just sand just enough to get those little nibs off. Okay. Your dowel, you want to 
the part that goes into the fuselage, you want to round it just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Now the, the hole may be just a little snug, but it shouldn't be too bad. You want it to stick through that, that bulkhead about an eighth of an inch. No more, no more than that. And then you want to get the 332nd drill approximately and go about a quarter inch forward of the trailing edge and right in the middle you want to drill your rear mount hole. It would help if I had a real drill but and I do, but I'm showing you how to do it so you, in case you don't have one. Most, most people have a set of drill bits laying around, so. I'll drill that hole through there. Okay. We're going to take our blind nut and our rear wing mount. We're going to stick that blind nut in the hole. We're going to push it in place. So we're going to stick our screw through there. Go ahead and uh, get your washer out with a screw head. We don't want to don't want to pull that through. Good Put your washer on. Do the hole. Don't forget to glue your blind nut in place. Very important. Oh boy, that came out fast. So we're gonna spritz that and set it off. Okay. Now, you just want to get this started on here. And screw it down till it's just snug. Doesn't have to be super tight. Okay, then we're going to set this in place. If you can see this or not but where that's at that dowel will set right in the middle one thing you want to do let me turn that alarm off real quick okay so one thing you want to do is make sure that your tip to tips are the same. Tip of the tail, 15.75. 15.75. Now what you want to do, I don't have a pencil, but I've got a pen. You should use a pencil, make it an alignment mark or two at the front so that way when we go to glue the glue the mounts in you can line it back up just right so take your medium ca and don't don't get the glue up towards the front just uh we're just going to tack this in place basically for right now put just enough in there and then uh coat the ends of your 
plywood mount. And we're going to slide that aft mount in place. Oops. Oops. It's sticking already. Make sure your alignment marks line up. Put just a little bit of pressure where that uh, F mount is. It won't take long to set up. You want to wait a few extra seconds for this dowel to tack in place really good. Okay, that's been a few extra seconds. Now you can uh, unscrew your wing bolt. And you want to carefully and gently lift up the back of the wing. Oh boy, I got a little glue on there, didn't I? Oop, there we go. Get on there. I didn't wait long enough. Gosh darn it. Okay, so we'll put a little extra on here. And where's my screw? And my washer. Put that back in there. Snug that back down. And now take a piece of tape and do this like I normally do instead of trying to rush through this in video take that in place we're gonna let that dry for a good five minutes or so and we'll be back okay guys so uh, <clears throat> we let this set for about 15 minutes we should be good to go now peel this tape off I didn't glue the wing to the fuse lock. Shouldn't have. I know some of you might think this is a little shade tree way of doing it, but it works. Okay, so now that we've got the dowel in the correct position, we're going to take some medium glue and we're going to Really lock her in there good. Put a fillet of medium CA on each side. And set her off. Another thing you want to do is make sure you glue that in there good. Set that aside for a second. Oops. Okay, those two long pieces that were on one of the fuselage sides, we're going to use those now. They go inside the fuselage. It'll be a snug fit, but they'll fit. You want to put it so that it butts up against the bottom of the rear wing mount that reinforces that and put it straight and just go ahead and dry fit them I don't worry about sanding them either because I'm not going to be covering them or anything okay so once those are in place take your thin CA glue 
and uh, let it run down in there. Then we'll glue the other one. Okay, that increases the strength of that top part tremendously. And it locks in this aft wing mount. I think we're all set. Is that dry? Yep. Okay. So now we got our wing mount all done. See how easy that was? A thousand rubber bands are a whole lot easier, but everybody wanted a bolt on a wing for this, so. We did it. There you go. There's your bolt on wing. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're ready to do covering and radio install. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video as just a construction video. And then uh, the next video we will. Uh, not do an in-depth covering, but uh, we will, for lack of a better term, we will cover some of the highlights of covering this particular model. And then uh, the last video, we will cover radio and motor installation. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please uh, like and subscribe to our videos, and we will continue producing these. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, so... When you like it, we know you appreciate it. When you subscribe, we know even more so. So everybody have fun and God bless and we'll see you soon.